Hello all, and uh, welcome to this uh, quick tutorial on making fungi in ZBrush and 3ds Max. So before we go and make some fungi for our uh, terrain, I've got some uh, reference photos that I want to look at. I advise you guys do the same. So I took some of these from Stourhead over the weekend. Uh, really useful. You'll notice I've got some from uh, wide shots, so I can actually see how they integrate with the environment. And I've got some nice and close up in my hand as well. Okay, so we'll get started. With all this in mind, I'm going to start creating it in 3ds Max. I'll start with um, just a cylinder. And I'm going to convert that to an editable poly. I'm just going to stick a basic material on it. I like to have the edges in black. So I'm going to delete the uh, top cap of it. I don't need that. And I'm just going to weld these points together. So I've chosen 10 sides here. Um, from my reference images, you'd have noticed that the uh, cap of that uh, mushroom I was looking at was um, quite large and prominent. So I don't mind sacrificing some uh, extra um, geometry space for that. You know, I don't want to be too tight with that. I'm going to take this edge and bring it out a bit. So this is going to be the uh, top cap of the mushroom. I'm just going to go ahead and quad up these parts of it now. Now for the uh, stem of the mushroom, I don't actually need that to have much geometry at all in comparison. So I'm going to make that a uh, six-sided cylinder. I'm just going to make sure that's all nice and centered. So you notice I have got a segment that I've left in the middle of the stem of the mushroom. Um, I've left that there for the convenience of uh, making some of them different. I'm obviously going to be duplicating this geometry over and over and over. It's going to have the same UV space, which means I can't change the texture really. But I can, however, move all of these um, edges and vertices about to create some uh, variation. And uh, having that little segment there in the stem is going to help me do that. Okay, so I'm going to do a basic unwrap on this. Um, just going to do some planar mapping. And I'm going to make sure I dock all of that information to the uh, bottom left of the uh, UVW space. You'll notice that I've not given the uh, bottom of the cap as much UV space as the top. Uh, it's quite obvious, really. You're not going to see it as much, are you? So uh, there's, not, there's not a great deal of point giving it uh, that extra space. Okay, so as always, we're going to uh, export that out as an object file, and then we're going to import it in ZBrush as an object file. So here I've got it imported in. I'm just going to give it the map cap gray material, and I'm going to subdivide it up. So we've got some nice uh, geometry to play with. It's always a good idea to look back at your reference images, uh, try and work out how you're going to go about it. So it's worth noting here that um, I've turned off SMT as I've been dividing this geometry. Um, that's smooth modifier. You'll notice that when you do divide with it on, it um, can kind of distort the uh, sharp edges of your model. So if you've got a really low poly model like this one, you probably want to turn SMT off. Um, don't worry about its boxy look. Uh, we can sort that out with some basic sculpting afterward. Right, so as you can see, I'm checking back on my reference images. Now, with my symmetry, what I can do is if I press X and I go up to transform, which activates symmetry. I can also activate it on another axis. So that allows me to sculpt um, multiple uh, edges simultaneously. Uh, that speeds up this process of smoothing out the uh, top of the mushroom cap. And I'm using the generic sculpting brushes of clay build up. It's just the case here, really, of uh, checking back on your reference images and uh, making it look as you want it to look. Using the standard, uh, the damn standard brush to uh, sculpt some of the um, under parts of the cap there. And move topological tool in places as well, just to adjust the geometry. Okay, so 
I'd say we're ready to texture this. So the way I'm going to go about it is a uh, texture stamping method that um, I've used on uh, the alpha brushes and texture stamping on my channel. If you've not seen it already, uh, go ahead and watch that. Um, so essentially what I'm going to do is take uh, some of the reference images that I've um, got of these mushrooms and uh, photo bash them a little bit. So I'm using a 600 by 600 canvas in Photoshop. And I'm bringing in those reference images, duplicating them, enlarging them, and uh, editing them as I see fit. Try to get rid of things that look too obviously repeated. And here I'm using the clone and stamp tool. So to use that tool, you obviously just select it and you hold down alt over an area that you want to copy you release alt and then you just click and drag and it will print a faded out stroke of that uh, area over um, where you're clicking so i'm creating multiple layers here it's good to have um, a lighter texture and a darker texture i've also got a texture for the belly of the mushroom and the stem and i'm going to export all of those out as pngs so now I go back into ZBrush, and just like I did on the other video, I allocate them to the texture on the left-hand side, and make sure I've got RGB turned on, Z-Add turned off, drag rect, and uh, a type of alpha brush selected. And I'm going to click and drag those textures out. And from here on out, it's very much using your uh, artistic um ability to complete the uh mushrooms to a stage of aesthetics that you are happy with you might find it's handy to mask off certain areas of the mushroom when doing others like for example here i've masked off the cap while i'm working on the stem okay so once you've uh, finished that you of course want to export the textures out so i'm going to export out my diffuse and my normal it's always a good idea to check UV map first and make sure that's on the texture size you want. And then texture map, create from poly paint. And I want it on a lower subdivision um, of my normal map as I export it. Obviously make sure the flip G is selected when you do that and that you flip all of these textures vertically. So now I'm going to go back into Photoshop and have a look at my textures. I can make some other alterations if I want. And of course, I'm going to go into Max and see how they've come out there. I'm just do a quick pan around my model and see what's going on. So it's up to you how much time you spend there. Um, I've got some little things I'm going to fix up on my normal map. But once you're happy with that, you'll be ready to allocate it around your scene in ZBrush again. So back in ZBrush, I've got my little terrain that I've made. And I've also brought in... Um, my mushroom and it's worth noting that i've got my mushroom at a lower resolution here um, i don't want it having the um million points that it had when i was doing the high res so i've got i've got a lower um version of it selected here and that's absolutely fine when we take it back into max later it will have the uh textures that we exported um projected onto the low version anyway so that's fine so what I'm going to do here is append it as a subtool underneath my terrain and, and I'm going to press B and select create multi mesh brush. So what this is going to do is append that mesh of my mushroom as a brush. So now when I click around my model, it uh, populates the area of where I'm clicking. So it's quite a quick way of populating your scene with uh, meshes, and it is a useful tool. Um, this can, however, be a little bit cumbersome if you're not too familiar with it. If you only want to populate your scene with a few mushrooms, I personally recommend uh, appending them as separate subtools and just manually moving and scaling them like so. But yeah, there you are. Obviously, once all of this is uh, compiled in a way I'm happy with I can export it out um, as a low mesh and then take all of these textures I've created and put them all on my models in 3ds max as texture maps 
So I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Cheers for now, guys.